Well, gang, right now we are focused on the IEEE. Okay, the IEEE organization is the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. They are a body that introduces standards for all things related to electronics and electrical engineering, right? All these aspects. So, uh, certainly Ethernet, for example, comes under their jurisdiction in terms of something that they wanted to help standardize so that we could have effective communication over wired networks. And wireless is another place where they said, okay, well, we need some standards to come up with effective wireless communication. Because before this time, what you end up with is lots of independent uh, organizations coming up with their own standards, their own proprietary standards. Here's the way ours will work. Here's the way ours will work. But guess what? When these try to connect to each other, it's a no-go. It doesn't work. So what we like, what we like instead is configurations that we can all play with, right? That we can all utilize. You build yours, I'll build mine, but we'll build them to a lowest common denominator that we can all understand. That's what the IEEE was really trying to manage. Um, again, what the IEEE deals with in terms of networking, if we think about the uh, OSI seven layer model, right? Physical, data link, uh, network, transport, session, presentation, application, you remember those? Well, Here's where the IEEE works in terms of the networking. They're dealing with the signaling, the physical interfaces. They're dealing with the data link aspects of MAC addresses and the management frames, the frame uh, structure itself, what's in that. Uh, that's all defined in an IEEE standard. So, of course, the wireless standard is what we call 802.11. Uh, basically, if we look at a timeline here, three key dates, 85, 90, and 97 are just a couple of real brief ones to be aware of. Uh, 85 is when the FCC said, hey, guess what? Here's a range of microwave frequencies we're not going to regulate. We're not going to charge you to utilize something in the 2.4 gigahertz range or in the 5 gigahertz range. And so this is where the independent uh, vendors would come up with their own standards. And then the IEEE said, hmm, you know, maybe we ought to regulate that. And they decided that in uh, 1990. That is when the 802.11 committee uh, was established, inviting engineers from all of these different wireless LAN companies to come in and participate in this and help to develop effective communication, high-speed communication, reliable communication, right? All the things you want in your wireless standard. But it took them until 1997 to release, essentially, their first effective uh, standards that these um, these companies could partake of. Now, again, they had engineers that were on those committees. They knew what was coming. So products were released a little bit ahead of that, but really 97 is when it became a set of effective standards. Now, it was a de defined standard, but the IEEE is not an organization that in any way has any uh, capability to enforce anything. Uh, neither do they standardize any particular brand's uh, release of a product. In other words, if I'm Cisco, I can choose to follow the standards defined by the IEEE, but there's no requirement that I follow any particular 802.11 standard. Something important to remember about the IEEE environment is, okay, they define great standards, they're very good, but they're not enforced.